Hi guys, I'm Daniel Bates. Uh, I'm here at Colorado State University. I work in the Materials and Molecular Analysis Laboratory. I'm the cryogen guy, and today I want to show you guys how we're doing a helium fill of a doer. So, and we're here at C2B down in the chemistry basement. It's going to be a good time. Alright guys, so we come into the helium recovery room now and the first thing I just wanted to show you is there's a lot of stuff in here and it's cluttered. There's, you don't want all this in here when you're doing the transfer. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is this extra doer. Okay, we've got two of them, we're only going to be using the one. So this extra one we have, we want to just remove the quick connect cord here and then we can take this guy, we'll close the valve that that quick connect was connected to, and then we're just going to push it right out of the room and into a spot. Boom. Just get it out of your way. We're also got a push gas tank usually stored in here on wheels, so we're going to take that guy also, and we're just going to bring that out of the room. All right, so that'll help clear up some of the space so we can now work in here uh, more easily and we won't get tripped up and get caught up on stuff. So I just wanted to show you that there's some pre-steps we want to do before we're ready to go. All right guys, so right as you come in the door, up to your left, right here, you'll find all the safety equipment that you'll need. All right, so you've got your face shield. You've got two sets of gloves. So we've got a short glove. If you've been doing this and you're familiar with the process, you're probably comfortable just using a short glove. But if you are not familiar with the process, we also have these like elbow gloves. You can go all the way up for shoulder gloves, so you can uh, wear that as well. And we'll show you a still image of all this equipment laid out uh, to help just show you each of the pieces. All right guys, so now I wanna just point out all the different components in here real quick. And so to my right here we have helium tanks. So this is just helium gas reserves that we can convert to liquid if we need to. Those are just sitting full pretty much all the time waiting to be used if we need it. Right behind me slash to my right is the ATP which purifies the helium gas to prepare it for liquefaction. And then the ATL which is on my left here, this is the actual liquefier and it also has a doer that it then fills with the uh, helium liquid. That is what we're going to be transferring out of. This is the other doer. So this is the cryofab doer we have. This is just a storage tank. So this is what we put helium into to bring it, say, place it like to an NMR, fill an NMR, for instance. Um, the other thing I'll point out is this quick connect line. Uh, so there's two different sizes. Uh, we'll show you a still image of that. You want to make sure you use the bigger one when we're doing a fill. Uh, which is the one that's connected right now. Uh, the reason for that is we're going to produce a lot of helium gas while we're filling this and we need to allow that pressure to release and if you use a smaller tube you're not allowing the gas to release as quickly and you're going to build up pressure, a back pressure, which you want to avoid. Um, the other thing I'll point out real quick is we do have a step ladder. All right, so some people it's a lot handier for them to step up here to get good uh, leverage when they're trying to put a stinger into this doer. Um, and then we have an electronic monitor and a gauge that can measure the level of helium in here. And we'll show you a still image of that here in a minute. Um, and the last component, I should say, sorry, I gotta walk over here. The last component that you'll need is the actual stinger. And so that's the transfer line that the helium will actually run down. Uh, I like to call it a harpoon and pretend, well, not pretend, but I call that the whale and you're harpooning the whale. Uh. All right guys, so this is the ATL 160, uh, the liquefier, and I'm just going to bring you through the different menu options and show you uh, how to go into liquefy mode. So if you came in, the mode button here at the top, you push, it's a touch screen. And as you can see, there's liquefy, purge clean, transfer, stop, or back to status. So if you hit status, you just go right back to that previous screen. All right, mode, 
Eh, sometimes it's hard to get that to go, all right? We want to do a transfer, so we would go to the transfer option. And you want to start your transfer slow, but the setting goes one, two, three, four, five, six in increasing speed. That's just going to increase the pressure in the ATL 160 to help push the uh, liquid helium through that transfer line. So we want to start that off with a slow. And then enable the compressor in transfer mode. You could do that here, but we'll just say no. That way it doesn't kick on and that will it'll keep it quiet in here. Um, that will automatically bring up this screen. So now it's tracking the level of liquid helium in this doer as a function of time. In order to go back, you actually just push on the graph itself. Um, this is just this now brings you back one menu and you're now looking at all the different graphics options. If you wanted to go right back to where we just were, you want to look at liquid volume, which is here on the left, and you want to look at it hourly so that you get that zoomed in image. So we click on that, it'll bring us right back to where we just were. You might think home button. No, the home button doesn't bring you home. It just recenters your graph. So if you had zoomed in, so you have zoom up, zoom down buttons, you can zoom in on the graph, try different things, go different, look at different places. And then you hit home and it just brings that graph back to its original. So in order to come out of a graph, you push on the graph itself. It brings you to the graphics menu. And now we have that status option. We can always go back to our main menu. If you want to look at the graphics, that is what this other button here is on the right. With the uh, wrench and screwdriver, you can push this button. It always brings you to tool options, one of which is graphics. You should not need to use system, manager, or about for doing a transfer. Look at graphics, it brings us to our same graphics. Liquid volume, look at it versus week, day, or hour. All right, back to status. Uh, once you've started your transfer, that's when you'll want to speed up the rate of your transfer. You'll then go to mode, transfer, and you can now pick three or four, or if you're more than likely, if you're me, you'll go to six because you want it to go faster and you don't want to wait a long time. So then you can speed up the transfer. I won't do that right now because we're not actually doing a transfer, but you would just hit six and then you'd be good to go. Um, that is the ATL 160 menu options that I would like to show you. All right, guys, this is the digital meter that's reading the liquid helium level in our cryofab storage doer all right you can look at how many inches on here and again i'll show you a still image here in a second of the scale you will then look at on the cryofab doer itself and that will you'll be able to tell what the percent of helium is in the doer uh, this goes on a scale from 1 to 25 so we're at 15 inches that could also give you an idea right away at we're over half full of helium, for instance. Um, and that's all I need to tell you about that. It's pretty simple. There's also a helix uh, non-digital meter that will also tell you helium level in the same doer, and we'll show you a still image of that as well. All right, guys, now we're getting to the fun part. We're gonna do the actual helium transfer. So I've got my cryogen gloves on, I got a mask on I'm about to put down in a minute. It's going to get a little echoey. I apologize for that. But uh, we're going to get this transfer line. A few little hints here. There's a, hand, a knob up top here. We want that knob facing towards this wall. We'll show you a picture of the pipes in the ceiling, but it will catch up in the ceiling. Uh, aside from that, we've got to get this piece will show you in detail what this is comprised of here in a minute. But we've got to take and slide it over the top. There's a couple here. This couple will show you again in detail here in a minute. But we've got all these components right on this sliding couple here. We're going to put that right by the bottom of our harpoon. So now the harpoon's ready to stab the whale. Make sure our gloves are on. I'll now go to Echo Town here. All right, so we lift this up. 
Now I have to hold it right above this. And plunge into that doer. I still got a little bit caught up there. Oh boy, can't go down right away. Now we're screwing in the bottom collet to lock that sleeve in place. All right, so now this sleeve is locked in place, but we can still slide the harpoon up and down the sleeve. And so we're gonna just bring it in a little bit. You can hear the system's pretty pressurized, so I don't wanna go down too far because this warm stinger will start boiling more helium off. So I wanna allow this now to cool down for a minute. I'm gonna lift this back up. Uh, I feel pretty safe at the moment right now. And so we just got helium gas coming out here. You can put your hand in front of it. It's not that cold. That's because this whole line is still warm. I can already feel this getting cold, so we're starting to cool this transfer line. To prepare for stabbing this doer, I want to take this top hat. So I'll take the hat out or off. But I also want to take Again, this is the same setup as over here, and I'll show you in detail. But these pieces we're going to take off, and I'm going to actually put them over this before this thing gets cold. And put it all the way up by the top. And so this is the cap, so to speak, that's going to seal when we put that stinger in here. And so now it's ready to go. We're just going to now wait. We just need this system to cool down, and we're going to come down with the stinger a little bit more until we start getting down into the helium. Once this is all cold, we get down into helium, we'll really be able to tell because this will generate a plume of helium, which is actual liquid helium coming out the end. That's when we know we can do it. We can now insert the other end into here and start our transfer. Um, so it's already cooling down where I can now start to see it. If I feel it, it's quite cold now. So I know we're getting a little bit close here. I'm not too surprised that I have a little bit higher pressure, so this is going a little bit quicker. Uh, you may take another minute or two longer than this on, to, on average to get this to cool down. Uh, but for video's sake, we're going a little fast. So you probably can see that on the camera, I hope, or one of them. We've got this cloud. That is not a plume yet. That's still just gas, but we're getting really close. So I'm going to bring this system, so I'm unscrewing this top cap to loosen it, which allows me to push this harpoon down. And I just want to get it at least so that we're inside of the seal. And now I'm going to tighten this. Boom. We hit a plume. That's all this, that's liquid helium now. So now we got to go fast. And we want to put that in here. The only reason I say we're going fast, it's just wasting money. This stuff's very expensive. That's the only thing. So we just want to be quick, not to waste money. It's not necessarily a safety thing, although if you blew the whole room full of helium, that would be a safety issue, and that alarm will go off and tell you the room's filling with helium, you need to leave. All right, so we seated that, we tightened it. We're now going to check the system's pressure. So we want to be at that main menu, the status menu. Pressure of the doer, 2.25 PSI. Okay, so we're sitting at a fairly low... We Basically, we don't want this to be up, up above 3 PSI. Uh, you're fine. There's no safety issue until you start getting way above that, in which case there's safety release valves that will actually go off. Um, but we just want to balance transferring the helium. The higher the pressure, the faster the helium transfers. The faster the helium transfers, the more the helium boils off and we lose helium to the, uh, to the system, out of the system. So we don't want to fill it too fast. The obvious other side of that is, how much time do you want to spend doing a transfer? So it's kind of a balance, but I'm usually looking for about 2 to 3 PSI in this ATL, and that will push helium at a pretty good rate. Uh, at this point, pressure is at 1.85 PSI, so I feel comfortable now loosening again this top, uh, call it, think, and then uh, Pushing the system down, basically to the bottom. Thunk, that's the bottom. So we'll go up about an inch from the bottom or two. Now I can tighten this again. The swage lock fitting on the top. Now that's sealed nicely. 
This is sealed nicely. You can tell because there's no helium gas blowing out any of these orifices. So we've got a tight system. Pressure of the doer, 3.46 psi. So it just jumped, and that's because I put this stinger in here deeper and it was warm. So it just increased the pressure. That's going to help push stuff over, and this pressure will now slowly start to drop as we put helium into the cryofab doer. If you're above 3 psi or at 3 psi, you cannot go into transfer mode. So that is something, that is just a safety feature. They don't want you going into transfer mode at high pressure. So if it's not letting you go, see right there, I tried to go to transfer mode, doer pressure too high. So it won't even let me go into transfer mode and change. I was on slow and I want to go to fast, but I'm already at too high of a pressure. The system won't even let me do that. So I've got to wait, let helium transfer over, let this doer come down in pressure below three, and then it will actually let me go into the transfer menu and I can now go to fast, enable compressor, I'll say no again, I don't want to enable the compressor. And now I'm in fast transfer mode. Again, I'll go back and look, pressure is at 2.72 PSI. Fast transfer mode means that if the pressure gets below 2 PSI, there's a heater on this thing that'll kick on and start warming so that it creates pressure of the helium. Uh, so basically it's going to sit at 2 psi in fast transfer mode. I found that to be a very good uh, pressure for transferring into this doer. Uh, so we now wait until this fills up. Alright, so we've been letting the helium transfer now for a good 20 minutes or so. According to our gauge over here, we're at 20 and a half inches. So it's, I like to shoot above 20 inches. It gets you over 90 liters. Call it about good. Um, I could go a little bit longer, but we'll call that fine. So now we gotta stop a transfer. Okay, so the first thing I did is over here, I put it in transfer slow, so that we have the lowest pressure on the doer. Okay, now we're just gonna take the lines out. So we're going to loosen just the top screw cap on this end and do the same thing on this end, loosen that guy. When I take this line all the way out, this cap's going to come off with it, that's fine. It's easier if it does. And then on this side we'll also take some of that, that whole slip, that whole hardware is going to come out on this side. Uh, I'll show you that. So we start, we can just start by I'm going to bring this up some, and then I'll retighten that, but I want it to hold right there. All I'm doing is just trying to get this thing up, but the line's only so long, so you got to lift that side. And then I'm going to hold this collet and just lift this. That one can get a little sticky, so you, gotta, you can take a little oomph right there. Again, I can now tighten this top screw cap. And that should hold this line so it doesn't slide up or down. Now that's about as high as we can go until we take this out all the way. And now I'm going to remove this. And there will be a little pressure and a little push action going on. Okay. And boom. So now we've got a plume still. We've got to keep that pointed away, up and away. We're going to lift this line on this end up into the ceiling area. You'll see the plume goes away because we've gotten it out of the liquid. So now there's just gas. And we're pretty close to all the way up here. So now I actually have to unscrew this bottom screw cap here. All the way. And I'm just going to take the whole thing out. All in one big movement. So make sure the ceiling's out of my way. I'm looking up. I'm going to pull kind of up and out of the way of stuff. And I just lift all in one movement. All right, just to show you, if this collet doesn't come out, it's gonna sit there and blow helium. You've gotta just yank it out. Otherwise, you're just, it's gonna be blowing, it's gonna scare you. Just grab it by the screw cap and pull it out. All right, transfer line is out. 
We can now set the transfer line back over here. Once it has warmed up and this isn't all frosted over, you'll be able to take this off and put it back, but that's gonna take a few minutes while it's all cold. I can do this now. Uh, the other system's all right here. So we're gonna let that also warm up. Once these pieces are warmed up, we'll then put them back here and here. Um, yeah, aside from that, that's pretty much it. So we'll let the stuff warm up and then I'll show you just real quick like putting the cap screws back on. All right, so these are getting warmed up a little bit here. So we've got the, on the transfer end that was in our cryofab doer here, we're gonna take, and you just gotta unscrew the bottom. This will slide out. We're gonna slide the rest. Again, we'll show you, show you what those components are. It's the screw cap, a brass ring, and a O-ring. So that base, we can, there's the exact same system is right here. So we're gonna loosen this because we have an O-ring and a brass ring there. If we loosen that, we should be able to get this to slide down into there. If it's catching, then that means we need to check this O-ring, make sure it's seated properly. And it was definitely not seated properly and I was smashing it. All right, but we got, All right, so I've got this brass slip. I've then got the, the cap. So I put the slip through the cap. Then I have a brass ring. And then I have the O-ring. And now I can screw that on top of the cryofab, like so. So I'm taking that piece, and I'm going to just put it and screw it on here all right and then again same kind of setup so we've got a cap a brass ring and then an o-ring and then we've got the top cap it's always easier to just put these through and get the o-ring seated on whatever is going through it and then screw on your cap i've just found by doing this enough that way you know the o-ring is seated around the object you're trying to put down in there We've got that cap is now set and seated properly. We've got to take the slip off the other end, so the end that went into the ATL. So I'm going to grab this slip here now. And just to show you, I'm going to take the whole thing off. So this is that whole slip that was on the transfer line in the ATL. All right, the, this, the cap, the big cap, is the part that we need to put back on the ATL. This slip we keep on the transfer line. So the slip, we can just put right back on this transfer line, and then we just tighten that cap to make sure it stays on the transfer line, otherwise it would fall back off. So tighten that, and that now the transfer line is ready for the next user. We took off, again, a screw cap, brass, and an O-ring, and we're gonna put those onto this, guy, this little top hat. So again, you, the easiest way to do this is you put the, the screw cap on first, then the brass, then the O-ring, and it's easier to mount them on this piece and then screw them into the ATL versus screwing these com three components on and then trying to shove this cap through that screwed in uh, screw cap. I know that was a lot of words. I'm sure our editing guru can fix that up a little bit. But we get that cap ready, and now we can just put it right on top of the ATL and we just screw that down and we just make sure this top hat or plug we're going to keep kind of tapping it make sure it's seated all the way down and that's nice and tight so now this thing's closed off our transfers closed off here closed off here so we're just going to put this system back and put everything back in the room the way we found it and then we're going to go through the menu options and we'll turn it and go instead of transfer mode, we'll go back to liquefy. And so I'll show you that as well. Uh, and then we'll lock up the room and we're good to go. All right, so we just need to clean up and make sure that the room is left the way we found it. And so any PPE equipment that we use, we're gonna put back up on the shelving right up here where you can expect to find it. 
We're also going to put the ATL back into liquefy mode. So as I showed you uh, in the zoom in, we go to status, we go to mode, we go to liquefy, and then we're going to liquefy slow. So we'll hit the slow option. Boom, you just heard the compressors kick on, so it's getting ready to liquefy. Uh, there's also a brake on both of these back wheels for the ATL. So we're just going to engage those brakes back here. Make so you want the on to be down, the off to be up. We engage those so that this thing's not moving anywhere, it's held in place. We're going to turn off our electronic helium meter that we were using to watch the cryopath level. So we don't need that on all the time. We're going to turn that off. And then we're going to bring in our push gas helium, the gas tank we had. We're going to put that over on the side where that was. And then we have that extra doer. So we got to bring that in here and then reconnect that bleed line and make sure it's open to the uh, up to recovery system. And then, and then you're good to go. So uh, I won't actually go get that doer and bring it in right now. But just remember that and I'm going to jump out of frame for a minute, but just remember that the smaller line is the one we hook up to our extra doer to just bleed it. And so again, we'll show you a still image of each line next to them, each other, so you can see the difference in the diameters of them. But you'll just take the smaller diameter line and hook it up to that extra tank, and then make sure the valve is open uh, on the doer so that it can bleed the line, or the line can bleed the doer, sorry. Uh, then you're good to go. Shut the door and, you know, hopefully it's the end of the day and you can go have a beer. Cheers.